Today, we're going to talk more about Liskov's substitution principle. But first, I want to catch this movie before it rotates off of streaming. Mr. President, a half hour ago, the commander of Burbelson Air Force Base issued an order to the B-52s that were holding at their fail-safe points to attack their targets inside Russia. <laughs> the planes are fully armed with an average load of 40 megatons each. The triangles are their primary targets. Uh, the squares are their secondary targets. The aircraft will be begin uh, penetrating Russian radar cover within 20 minutes. General, I find this very difficult to understand. I was under the assumption I'm the only person authorized to use nuclear weapons. Why haven't you recalled the aircraft? Ah, uh, well, Mr. President, in order to prevent the Ruskies from issuing false or misleading instructions, the recall code must be issued to the B-52s all at once. But unfortunately, since the, uh, the bounding box is a square and the big board is a rectangle, we can't actually highlight all the planes. <clears throat> Do you mean to tell me you can't recall the aircraft? <laughs> yeah, that's about the size of this, President, but rest assured we are plowing through every possible line of code to find the square selection box. Uh, but um, <clears throat> since there are 26,000 lines of code, it's going to take us about three days to get through it all. When did you say the planes would reach Russian radar cover? About 18 minutes from now, sir. Dr. Strangelove, you're in charge of our software efforts. How could this happen? Mr. President, it is actually quite possible if you do not follow the Liskov's substitution principle. Liskov? What kind of commie name is that? Herr General, Dr. Vava Liskov is an esteemed professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and a patriot of the highest caliber. But the whole point of the Liskov substitution principle is lost. If you don't follow it, why didn't you use solid design principles, eh? Don't look at me, bro. I'm just a project manager. He coded it. So if the Russians counterattack, are we still having our sprint planning meeting on Monday? So let me pause the movie for a moment so I can explain why following Liskov's substitution principle is so important. And you know the deal, like and subscribe. Liskov's substitution principle is the L in solid design. And I really want you to understand this in case you're asked an interview question and you really have to explain it. If you haven't watched my video on solid design, it'll be available after this video. And my code for the big board and recalling the planes is available on my GitHub or my website. Now, if you put aside all the math, Liskov's substitution principle basically says that if you have a parent class and a child class, and both of those classes can be passed into a method, they must behave exactly the same. Now, here's where it gets tricky if they don't behave exactly the same, but you think they do. Okay, so here's the big board. Here are all the planes that are in flight. Uh, here are the primary and secondary targets. And as you can see, I can't recall the planes because the recall button is grayed out. So in order to recall the planes, I have to highlight all the planes in my bounding box. Once I do that, I can recall. Now, if you want, the source code is available on my GitHub or my website. You can go download it and play with this yourself. Now, let's say your project manager comes around and says, the rectangle's too sloppy, bro. This is for the Air Force. It should be uniform, like a square. Circle back with me when you're done. Okay, well, the customer wants a square, we'll give him a square. If we look at the rectangle shape class, we already have a lot of useful stuff in here. We have the width, the height, we have this uh, method create shape, generate shape. And if we actually go to um, the recall engine, in the recall engine, all we're doing is passing in a shape. And if we take a look at the recall engine, that's rectangle shape. So theoretically, we could just create a square, have it derive from rectangle, and pass in the square. Easy peasy. Now to do that, we're going to go to generate shape. We're going to make this create shape virtual. And we're going to create a square shape 
that derives from rectangle shape. We're going to override create shape because down here, the X and the Y have to be exactly the same in order for it to be a square. So now all I have to do to make this work is I just take rectangle shape and I do square shape instead. I pass shape directly into the recall engine and everything should work. Let's check it out. Okay, so we have a big board. We got Russia, we got the planes, we got the targets. And when we try to highlight the planes, it is a square. Now we can't highlight all the planes, but it's not like there's gonna be a nuclear war and we're gonna have to recall them anyway, right? But while a square is a type of rectangle, a square is not 100% substitutable for a rectangle. And this is where Liskov comes into play. Here's my unit test project. And everybody knows that a rectangle's area is height times width. So if you do a unit test, the area of four times six is gonna be 24. And that test passes. But here's where things get interesting. A square has four equilateral sides, but since we inherited from rectangle, we have to bring one of these different sides along with us, either height or width. Since width is accessible here, we're really running the risk of screwing up our code just because we can put a value in here that doesn't make any sense. And any kind of unit test for this would fail. Look, the greatest sin in any kind of programming is to have your software do something unexpected. So when you're implementing derived classes, make sure that you're following Liskov's substitution principle and a child class and a parent class when they're passed into a method behave exactly the same. Now, since there's only a couple of places in the code where the square bounding box is being passed into the recall engine, it shouldn't be that hard for Posh Ryan to recall the planes, assuming he finds it in time and assuming there's no other bugs in his code. So let's see how the movie ends. <laughs> Gentlemen, <clears throat> I'm not a sentimental man by nature, but uh, I think we just bow our heads and say a prayer for our deliverance. Lord, we have seen the angel of death fluttering over. One of the planes hasn't turned back. That's impossible. I... Yeah. Posh Ryan, when you wrote the loop to iterate the array of planes, did you start the index with a zero? Oh, a van. So we're not having our sprint planning meeting on Monday.